Okay, so I'm going to come back. So in the previous video, we talked about given a certain number of digits, how many numbers you can make with them, right? Given the specific conditions in that problem, of course. But now what we want, what we want to do is this the same idea, meaning you have seven, for example, some digits essentially are given to you. For example, seven, eight, three, and five, right? And seven, eight, three, and five, and you want to essentially, of course, you can make a bunch of four digit numbers using using essentially these four digits assuming that for example that no digit you want that no digit essentially you will repeat right so assuming that there is no repetition you can make a bunch of numbers for example seven eight three five that's a possible number seven three eight five that's another number or seven five three eight or seven uh, Seven, um, seven, three, for example, five, eight, or something like that, right? But since there is, since you cannot, you, you're not supposed to repeat anything. Of course, for example, seven, seven, eight, three would not be a possible number because each digit is supposed to be used only once, right? Now, among all such numbers that you can make using these four digits, essentially what you want to know which one is the largest number and which one is the smallest number. Meaning, if, if, I, if I were to reformulate the problem, I would say, given essentially a certain number of digits, what's the largest number that you can make with those digits and what's the smallest number that you can make with the same essentially digits of, of course assuming that 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 you're not that you're not going to repeat any of the digits of course right okay so now in order to solve such problems let's say that basically you have you have these four digits and you want to you want to make the largest four digit number that you can make with these with that that can be made with these four digits right so the way that that and um, one thing that 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 you need to take into consideration which is very helpful from the very beginning i mean for example this the, i mean the course that that we are doing here is is um, I, I have essentially I, I usually take all of my math, mathematics courses from the NCERT uh, mathematics uh, textbooks textbooks that are essentially the textbooks that are used as the standard textbook math, mathematics textbooks in, essentially in India starting from class i suppose three four five six all the way up to 12 right now um what's important essentially in mathematics is that um suppose that um suppose and 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 then of course the the the, the, the course that we are currently doing here is taken from class six Meaning class six is essentially the beginning of mathematics becoming a little bit formal in in the in this line of mathematics textbooks basically up to class five it's just about shading things and understanding how to count for example a number of pebbles and how to add things how to subtract things things like that right from class six your mathematics becomes or essentially in this line of books the mathematics, the mathematics becomes essentially a little bit formal, and then as you move higher in the books, it gets more and more formal, basically. Right? Now, if you uh, essentially, if you intend to become a, if you intend to study 
computer science for example then um, in computer science essentially meaning that if you want to become a computer programmer um, any program that you write on a computer is, is essentially some operations that you do on numbers right meaning that if you want to, to, to get a job for example at Apple at Google or at uh, Microsoft the, essentially the good companies as a programmer for example you have to take a test for entering the for essentially, for essentially the, the, the company is going to test you if you understand your if, if you understand the concepts properly then you're going to be accepted as whatever role and then start working in the company um, the entrance essentially these entrance entrance tests are um, some concepts for example they ask you to write a program to do this and that and so on and so forth and any program that you write is essentially some some operation that you do on a bunch of numbers and then the the result of that operation becomes for example another number and then that number is assigned to something in your program and then your program does something in the real world right so that that's essentially the, the whole gist of programming is doing some operation on numbers and doing these operations is based on some algorithm meaning that for example uh, uh, I don't know for example when you have two pairs of pants and, and two shirts and you want to know in how many ways you can you can you can mix and match you use the fundamental principle of counting for example that's an algorithm that you can use in some program and every program that you write as a computer programmer it has to use some sort of algorithm that comes from mathematics right so from the very beginning if you if you intend to become a computer programmer or anything in IT or I don't know computer science or things like things like that you have to pay attention to the algorithms that you use in in your simple mathematics for example I have four digits over here and I want to know how I can how I can find the largest number possible using these four digits for example assuming that no digit is 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 repeated right and then i have i i i, I simply reason out that that for example if i use this digit over here that digit over there that digit over there and then the number is made right now this 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 way of making the number that i use this digit here that digit there that digit there this this is how i'm going to make this number meaning that this is my algorithm and then if I know my algorithm right, I can translate that algorithm, which is in the form of some sentence in the English language, I can translate it in such a way that some programming language understands it. If the programming language understands it, the computer can understand it, and then the, the computer can do the job for you without you having to think the same problem over and over again meaning that you write a program and the same thing the program will do for you anytime as many times as you want and of course fast and without making mistakes so all of these different problems that we are solving essentially in in, in mathematics these are the different algorithms that you can use in some computer program and use them in order to write some computer program or essentially some part of some computer program so if you want to again if you want to become a computer programmer and if you want to be successful in your job uh, from the very beginning you have to pay attention to essentially to the mathematics that you do it's absolutely important Otherwise, later on, you'll have to come back and read the same things again, which is going to take a whole lot of time. Now, the same problem that, 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 that we have here, I want to know what is the largest number that I can make with these digits, right? So, we said that essentially a number 
that I have essentially a number in decimal form, meaning in, uh, in, de in decimal system, in base 10 system, essentially you have the place values. You have the ones place value, you have the tens place value, you have the hundreds place value, you have the thousands place value here, right? And so since I want to, I want to make the largest number possible, I have to contribute the most to this place value, meaning that in this place value, if I put a one, it becomes a thousand. If I put a two, it becomes a two thousand. If I put a three, it becomes a three thousand. If I put a nine, it becomes nine thousand. But then over here, whether I put a one or a nine, it doesn't make much difference because the difference between, essentially, if I put a one, it becomes a one. One times one is a one. If I put a 9, it becomes just a 9 times 1, which is a 9, and the difference is only 8. The difference between 9 and 1 is an 8. But the difference between a 1,000 and a 9,000 is 8,000. So I have to contrib contribute the most that possible through these digits. I have to contribute the most to this to this place value because this is the weightiest place value in this number, right? So then naturally I have to, to pick the largest digit that I have and place it over here, right? So which means that I'm going to take the 8 and put it over here, right? So then again the same logic you can use, meaning that again in the number what remains to the right of this digit is again the largest place value available in the number. Then again, I take the largest digit that I have, which is a, happens to be a seven, I put it over here. Again, I use the same logic. I picked a five, which is greater than three. I put it over here, and then I pick the three and put it over here, which means that the number then becomes eight, seven, five, three. And that's essentially the largest number that you can make using these digits. Eight, eight, seven, five, three. That's, that is the largest. Now, what is the smallest number that I can use? That the, what is the smallest four digit number that I can make using these four digits? So I have four digits over here. This is the ones, this is the tens, hundreds, and thousands place values. So in order to, to make the smallest number, I have to contribute, since this is the largest place value in the number, and since I'm, 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 I'm looking for the smallest number possible, I have to contribute the least to this place value, right? I have to contribute the least to this place value. And you can see that essentially no part of what I'm using essentially in this course, meaning um, no part of what I'm explaining here. This is not, this is of course, this is not prepared, meaning that I'm not talking based on some text or some textbook or some procedure or some technique or anything like that. This is just simple logic that and anybody is 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 um, capable of doing this um, any problem any logical problem that you want to solve you can create a train of thought and then just keep moving with that thought you'll get to your destination you don't need to memorize anything in mathematics it's just simple logic that you use you can get to whatever it is that you want okay now so we established that since we are looking for the smallest number possible with these digits, we have to contribute the least to this place value because this is the largest place value in the number. So the least that I can contribute here would be, for example, the three. Because if I put the three over here, that would be three times a thousand, which is 3,000. But then if I put any of these numbers, this becomes a 5,000, 8,000, 7,000, this is the smallest contribution possible, right? Next, again, I do the same thing. The least amount of contribution or the least weight, basically. 
so that would be after three you have a five and then you have a seven and then you have an eight so the least uh, the smallest number would be three five seven eight three five seven eight seven eight which is the smallest number possible with with uh, with basically with these four digits in the next video we will do a couple of examples essentially a couple of exercises to work with this concept a little more thank you